this is kind of a, an odd Christmas special because normally we would take an hour and just play music and uh, relieve ourselves of the stress and the strife of news. But we were compelled to alter our merrymaking this week when Pope Francis issued a letter allowing priests to issue blessings of same-sex couples under certain conditions. Now, with reaction to the story, which we could not ignore, I'm joined by the Papal Posse, editor-in-chief of the thecatholicthing.org, Robert Royal, and canon lawyer and priest of the Archdiocese of New York, Father Gerald Murray. I guess you guys aren't here to sing, so let me get to the, to the basics here. Uh, your reaction to this letter issued by the Vatican Doctrinal Office, um, it, it's titled Supplicating Trust. The letter allows priests at their own discretion to bless same-sex couples, or even couples in irregular situations, as long as the blessing is not a formal liturgical blessing that would resemble a marriage. Now, the media has been having a field day with this. MSNBC went wall-to-wall -wall, uh, on Monday. Pope Francis approves church blessings for same-sex couples. Pope Francis takes historic step for same-sex couples. The text states that it is, quote, or it, quote, implies a real development from what has been said about blessings in the magisterium and the official texts of the church. Father, and then Bob, in 2021, Pope Francis's own doctrinal office said regarding blessings for same-sex couples, it was not possible to bless sin. That was the quote. What happened? Father Jared. Well, this pope is contradicting himself because he wrote he, that document he didn't write, but he approved its publication. And it said quite clearly what every pope has said up till now, who's ever had to deal with this question, you cannot bless people who are involved in sexual behavior that's immoral. So we don't bless adulterous unions. They're called euphemistically irregular here. And you don't bless people who are same-sex couples. A same-sex couple means people who have made an agreement between themselves to engage in homosexual activity. We don't bless that relationship uh, because it grievously offends God. So the, what we have here is the Pope, in fact, doing what it says in the, in the beginning of that document. This is an innovation and it's so-called development. But I have to say it's, it's really a corruption because it's taking uh, the doctrine of the church, casting it aside and granting uh, some kind of status as worthy of being blessed to mortal sin. And that is terrible. Mm. Robert Royal, um, the Pope signed this document, so he approved it. But what weight does it have? It's a declaration. It's a curious uh, uh, instrument to use to make this kind of statement. Well, a declaration by a dicastery, I, I, I believe, is the highest authority type do a document that they can issue. And so we, it, it is a, a very serious document. We don't know exactly that he signed this. His name doesn't appear on it, but it's it's been said by uh, Cardinal uh, Tucho Fernandez that, in fact, that he's approved it and, and that it, it comes from him. Look, I, I mean, what, what's happened here, and they make this claim right at the beginning, as Father was saying, is that this is a real development of doctrine on the matter of blessings. They try to put it in the context that this is it's primarily about that kind of change. But the th development that, that is taking place here is not that— um, they are not asserting that that, that uh, homosexual relations are are okay, but what they're asserting is that the development is we're not going to ask anybody. You know, it's going to kind of be don't ask, don't tell, and we're going to just indiscriminately pass out these blessings. So that is the change, the the Pope mm -hmm. Francis change that Cardinal Fernandez says is happening here, and in a document that is this authoritative from the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, that's a big deal. Well, here's what the letter says about blessing same-sex couples and couples who are divorced and remarried, okay? Quote, within the horizon outlined here appears the possibility of blessings for couples in irregular situations and for couples of the same sex, the form of which should not be fixed ritually by ecclesial authorities to avoid producing confusion with the blessing proper to the sacrament of marriage. Okay. Father, the document goes on to great pains to distinguish liturgical blessings from pastoral ones. Is this a distinction without a difference? Yeah, it's a made-up distinction. It's meaningless. What's, a, what's a, at stake here is the action. A blessing imparted by a priest means that the priest, as a minister of God on earth, appeals to the Lord to favor with his grace uh, something that is being blessed. 
And when you talk about a couple who are same-sex couple or a couple in an irregular or adulterous marriage, what's being blessed is the relationship. Some people have denied that, but that's not, that's not true. It is the relationship being blessed. And they're coming there precisely because they're in a relationship. What they're seeking is to have the church assure them that it's okay with God. Uh, God doesn't approve of any of this. And this is the tragedy, the disconnect here. The, the Pope is telling priests, ask God to bless something which God condemns very clearly in the scriptures, which is sex outside of marriage and unnatural sexual activity by homosexuals is wrong. It cannot be blessed. Uh, and we have to pray for the conversion of those people. Imagine telling someone, we're going to bless you, but not ask you to be converted from your sins. In effect, you're saying your mm -hmm. sin doesn't matter. Does this bar the German bishops and others who've already created these formalized blessings of same-sex couples, Bob, or does it encourage them to go further? Some of them are already saying this is a small, big step. Yeah, some people have made the argument that this document is actually intended to prevent the, the Germans and the Belgians who have been developing mm -hmm. formal rituals of, of same-sex blessings from doing so. But for me, the tip-off in this is that those more progressive elements in the church have no objections to the fact that there are limitations for now about what they're supposed to be doing. And so they're all praising it. The usual people are praising it, Father James Martin here in the United States and others. And the, our, our more traditional people are objecting to what the document says. And meanwhile, the progressives are objecting to the fact that we are saying that there is a confusion, that on the one hand, you've admitted that you cannot bless same-sex unions, but you can bless same-sex couples. And as Father rightly says, you can pretend that this is a difference. But in fact, why are you blessing two people? If you're talking about couples, a lot of people keep saying, well, no, it's individual human beings. No, they're, they're talking about couples. So it, it's yeah, a telling well, fact. It's a telling fact yeah. that groups like the Germans, as you rightly say, don't feel like they're going to be deterred. I think that they know that this is uh, one of the stops on the on the trip to the ultimate approval of the kinds of things that they want. Yeah. And I want to get to that point later. That's a great point about if nothing's changed, then why are you issuing a document and, and carving out a particular group of people? Father, the doctrinal office said that pastoral blessings, as opposed to those that take place according to formalized liturgical rites, can be more spontaneous, that's a quote, and less bound by moral prerequisites. Might we see spontaneous weddings down the road? I mean, w and what do you make of the wide latitude given here? The priest can decide whether to give this blessing or not, as opposed to what mass he can celebrate, whether the old or the new, that's highly regulated. You've got to go to the Vatican for that. But these blessings, everybody come. Come one, come all. No, uh, this is obviously a, a conclusion that the doctrinal office made, that they want to give blessings to same-sex couples and people in adulterous unions, so they invent a logic to do, justify it. There is no such thing as a pastoral blessing. Uh, that's ridiculous. It doesn't exist. I was in the seminary. I never heard of it before. A blessing given by priest is a priestly blessing, and the church provides rituals for specific occasions to do it. Now, to say it has to be spontaneous and no ritual, who are they kidding? How do you, how you, what prayer are you going to use? You're going to invent it on the, on the spot? Of course not. This is all going to be planned. They're going to take, you know, things similar to wedding prayers and the like and use those. They also, in this document, say you can't wear wedding clothings at these things. This is nonsense. They're more worried about what people look like than what the state of their soul and what their intentions are. So th th this is a really, uh, I have to say, a document that pretends that it's in line with Catholic teaching, but it blows Catholic teaching apart in the process. Uh, Bob, the document talks about moral judgments when priests are approached by these couples in irregular situations. It reads, the church, moreover, must shy away from resting its pastoral praxis on the fixed nature of certain doctrinal or disciplinary schemes, especially when they lead to a narcissistic and authoritarian elitism, whereby, instead of evangelizing, one analyzes and classifies others. And instead of opening the door to grace, one exhausts his and her energies in inspecting and verifying. Thus, when people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive moral analysis should not be placed as a precondition for conferring it. For those seeking a blessing should not have to require to have a prior 
moral perfection. And that's a quote from that new document. Now, Bob, barring the old traditional mass <laughs> is, is not narcissistic and authoritarian elitism, apparently. I guess like removing cardinals' pensions, for instance. But isn't morality important when considering whether to bless someone for something? Well, this is, this is intended to reject those rigid backwardists who are out there in the world, for sure. The, you know, that, that's a, that was a big mouthful you just read there, Raymond. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it, they, they, as I said earlier, they, what they try to do at the beginning is set this up as this is, this is a development in, in, from the Pope's understanding of what blessings are. But, you know, if, if somebody best blesses a fishing fleet, we know it's because they want them to go out and catch fish and they want them to be safe and we, mm -hmm. they want them to have good weather and, you know, all that sort of thing. When somebody blesses two people who come in who, who are in a same-sex relationship, we can't help but keep asking what exactly is being blessed. If they're coming forward and saying we want to live a more moral life, well, then there is nothing new about that. And people have always come forward and said, you know, I, I, I can't be perfect right now. And by the way, that last sent sentence about you know, there are, people don't have to have moral perfection. Who has ever claimed that you can't get a blessing right. until you're morally perfect? That, that's never happened in the history of the church. B Bob, th that text just goes round and round and round. Uh, Father, I'm awaiting the bank robber and adulterer blessings next. I mean, uh, look, we're all sinners, as Bob said. But this set aside here, for those in irregular relationships, it does beg the question, are we elevating certain sins to such a privileged status that they're considered normative or legitimized through this document? Oh, that's the effect of it, absolutely. You know, the effect of it is to say, uh, the church has no problem if you're living uh, with a second wife and your first wife is back at home with the kids and you're in an apartment with your new wife. We have no problem with that now. Two homosexuals go to City Hall, get married. We have no problem with that. Uh, nobody's called to moral perfection. You know, nobody reaches it. Now, you know, remember the Synod? This topic was taken off the final document. Now it's thrown at us. So where's the synodality here? What, remember the Synod? What about polygamy? That was twice mentioned in the preparatory document. I can see the polygamists lining up at the Holy See and saying, wait a minute, what about us? Uh, you know, this is the, the nature. When you destroy Catholic principles of rational understanding of doctrine, you come up with emotional satisfactions based on outrageous claims. For the Cardinal to say that you, it's wrong for you to inquire about the moral quality of the people seeking a blessing for not themselves, but for their relationship, well, the Pope excommunicates the Mafia regularly in his speeches. If the Cosa Nostra calls the local parish priest, says, you know, we want the same indulgence that the homosexuals and the adulterers get, what are we supposed to say to them? Good point. Look, quickly, gents, the document says, um, these forms of blessing express a supplication that God may grant those aids that come from the impulses of his spirit what classical theology calls actual grace, so that human relationships may mature and grow in fidelity to the gospel, that they may be freed from their imperfections and frailties, and that they may express themselves in an ever-increasing dimension of the divine love. I got to tell you, that Fernandez, he's got a wave of the line. Bob, are, are, the, are the couples seeking a blessing that will enable them to grow their relationship closer to what God and the church actually envision? I mean, what's the intention of the blessing, and how do you think it'll be used? Yeah, look, if that, if that's, I said, if they, that's why they come forward, then that's perfectly fine. But what, what is in fact taking place is, is, as we know, they're looking for affirmation, and that's why there is so, so much uh, kind of glee on the part of progressives in the church, and why there's so much dismay among the more traditional elements in the church about the, the apparent incoherence. That, that exists here. And again, th this is nothing new. If we're, what we're actually bl blessing is asking people to become more faithful in, 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 their, in their religious lives, in their moral lives. But there's almost a will not to know what those people are coming forward for. And you can see it in many different passages in the document. Father, uh, I'm thinking of the family synod and that footnote that appeared that, you know, we, we made so much about because it was a, essentially allowing those who were remarried or in an irregular relationship uh, and, you know, the mistress and the, and, the, and the guy whose wife and kids are at home to go down the aisle and get communion. 
Um, it seems we're going to need a lot more of these blessings. Uh, th yet there are still some who say, even after this document emerged, nothing has changed regarding church teaching on LGBTQ or divorced and remarried Catholics. But the Pope's dear friend, Jesuit Father James Martin, said on X this week, Vatican declaration on same-sex blessings, be wary of the nothing has changed response to today's news. It's a significant change. In short, yesterday as a priest, I was forbidden to bless same-sex couples at all. Today, with some limitations, I can. He even published a picture of himself in the New York Times doing just that with a gay couple. Who's right here, Father? Those who say nothing has changed, blessings are for everyone, or James Martin and company who say everything has changed? No, it, everything's changed. Let me give you an example. If I'm giving a class on Catholic moral theology to my parishioners, and I state, as is in the catechism, has been taught ever since God created the world, homosexual activity is inherently immoral. It's gravely sinful. So I state that at the end of the class, two men come up and say, Father, look at our rings. We're married civilly down to City Hall, and uh, we think it's fine. And by the way, the Pope says you should bless us. That's, that's a change, and, and that's the outrageous thing that's going on here, because we have to face the fact, if you treat mortal sin as of no importance, meaning it's not really mortal sin, then you've evacuated the entire moral Catholic teaching uh, that we rely on, because then it's what the ecclesiastic authority decides to favor and not favor. So the Pope recently said possessing nuclear weapons is a mortal sin. It's, it's wrong. Well, wait a minute. The Church has never taught that. And now you're teaching us that people commit mortal sin in a publicly known way because they've gotten so-called married at City Hall. They can get a blessing, and then we have to let their, mature, their relationship mature with God's grace. The only thing that God expects of people in homosexual relationships is that they end them. Uh, there's no maturing to make it a better relationship. It's an, a near occasion of sin. It's a promise to commit mortal sin. So this is, this is why everything has changed. Well, uh, I mean, no matter which side of this document you fall on, either a traditionalist or a progressive, I think everybody can admit this is an awfully floppy, mushy document. It's like silly putty. E everything is up for grabs. Any priest can do it anywhere. Uh, we've got to give a blessing to anybody who asks. The only thing that's fixed here is that you may not wear wedding garments or anything formal when they give you the blessing. So, I mean, that kind of opens up, I guess, uh, really externals. The, the couture is what everybody's focused on at the Vatican, which seems to miss the point you were making, Father. Bob, what do you make of the speed with which these changes, these developments are being issued, and the timing? We saw Bishop Strickland removed from his diocese, Cardinal Burke thrown from his housing, his pension taken away, and now this document. Is this all a piece? Well, it could be. I mean, you, you, you'd have to speculate why all these changes right at the end of the year here. I mean, there have been people who speculate that the, the Pope's health is worse than we've been told, and he's trying to get a, a number of things done before he comes to the end of his time in office. Um, and there, there clearly is is no effort to to slow down or to mollify people as they, they make these momentous changes. I, I think one of the reasons that we can say that these are momentous changes is that there seems to be a, a sense of panic among people. I mean, people want to deny that this is a momentous change. I, I receive notes from people all the time saying that you're you're wrong. You're saying that the, the uh, church is now going to bless same-sex uh, unions. I've never said that. I, I've, in fact, we just did a podcast, Father Mur uh, Murray and I, and multiple times we said that's not what's in the document. But people insist on focusing on that and not looking at the larger picture of what's actually going on. And it, the document is very cleverly written, and I, I think that the timing of the way these things have been done mm -hmm. has been very cleverly ordered so that this this whole series of changes can can find a uh, kind of slip through at the end of the year, and in 2024 we're going to find ourselves in a in a very very different church. Yeah, uh, Father, it it is an odd thing. I think what you're seeing is traditionalists are putting their head in the sand and pretending this isn't happening, while uh, you know progressives are clicking their heels and, and overjoyed that this is happening. They've already they're already coming up with their own rights and you know bringing the the, the friends into the parish. So uh, it, it it is interesting the the shape of this and the theatrics that are accompanying it. As I always say, practice is just as important or more important than doctrine, because the practice is the lived doctrine. And when you lose the practice or alter it or deform it, the doctrine just 
evaporates through the popular appreciation of it. You lose that, uh, that, that uh, sacred nature of the doctrine and respect for it. Already there is some resistance, however, mounting. Uh, Diane Montagna reporting that the Metropolitan Archbishop of Astana in Kazakhstan uh, is prohibiting his priests from performing any form of blessing of same-sex couples, as outlined in this new Vatican Declaration. Uh, there are other dioceses with similar pronouncements. Father, can such a resistance stand? I mean, the Pope's authority is absolute. He's a ruling monarch. Uh, the Pope is a monarch, but he's not superior to God, and he is the vicar of uh, St. Peter. He's not the vicar Excuse me, he's the vicar of Christ, but he's the successor of St. Peter. He's not the successor of Christ in the sense that he now has Christ's full authority to change teaching. Of course, he can't do that. So, no, what's going to happen, though, though, this is a cause for strife in the church because it is a revolution. Revolutions cause strife, whether they're done, you know, with guns in the street or with, you know, handshakes with velvet gloves on. And in this case, we have Cardinals uh, Tucho Fernandez and the Pope producing a document which is a challenge to the entire history of the church and how it treats sin and blessing, and then they expect everyone to fall in line. And in the document, it's interesting to say, no further guidance will be given. They're basically saying, don't talk to us anymore about this. Well, guess what? The conversation right. will continue because bishops are going to say, no, I'm not. When you say to a homosexual couple, we're going to bless your relationship, you know what you're telling them? You can commit mortal sin without any consequence. Well, God has never said that. I mean... Let's be. What is at stake here? It's eternity. It's not some nice arrangements of the New York Times to write a favorable editorial about the Pope and his and his actions. That's all ridiculous and meaningless. What counts is our souls on the road to heaven, and you're on the road to heaven when you avoid mortal sin and seek to be, repent. This is basically saying, don't ask people to repent. Bless them. Don't use a ritual. Don't dress up. Well, by the way, why do no ritual, no dress up? Because they know darn right well that when people see that, they're going to understand that this is an approval from the church. You, you can't mask it. It's an approval, and people are going to wear whatever they want. So, no, uh, this is not simply a little problem that's going to go away when people start smiling and being nice to each other. This is a battle mm. for the definition of what it means to be a Catholic. Do we affirm the supremacy of the divine revelation and natural law over human foibles and wishes? Because this is all about people want to do things. Guess what? God's law is what we need to do. We will leave it there, gentlemen. Um, I'm sure you'll have much more to say on this in the new year. Merry Christmas to you both. And there's commentary and podcasts by Robert Royal and Father Gerald Murray at CatholicThink.org. Thank you both.